How's it going everyone? John here and welcome back to another video. If you are new to the series and you haven't checked out the very beginning of this tutorial series where I go over the basic navigations of Streamlabs OBS, make sure you go ahead and check out that video. I'll put it in the card above and also in the video description below and you can also check it out on the OBS playlist. Now for this video, I do want to go over the overall settings and just the settings for OBS or Streamlabs OBS. And the way to get to that is you're going to go over on the top right hand side, you're going to see this little gear, it's going to say settings. So this right here underneath the generals tab, you're going to be able to do a bunch of different things here. Not, not too much crazy things, nothing that you really have to worry too much about. But if anything does get kind of like sluggish or anything like that, you can go ahead and delete the cache and restart it. Now it does say here, and this is why you would do that. It says if you're experiencing weird behavior, you can try deleting your cache directory. This will be the result of you losing your scene configurations and settings, but you can fix some of the stability issues. So this is something that you're not always going to have to do. I've never had to do it, but if things just seem really weird out of whack and crazy, then you can go ahead and just do that. But like I said, it is going to delete all of your scene configurations. So you'll lose probably all of your scenes that you have with like the stream alerts and so on and so forth. Maybe even your own filterings and stuff like that. So that's only if you're really going to ever need to do anything like that on extreme cases. So down here under the input, of course, if you have a different language other than English, then you can go and change that too. But uh, we don't have to worry about that. Um, so here on the output, you can have it to where it will, and this is what a lot of people like to do when they stream, is automatically record when streaming. This will require a little bit more power from your computer to do that, especially if you're trying to stream in high frames and high resolution and stuff like that. But that is an option here. And I know a lot of people ask me this question on how they can record while they're doing it because if you're using a capture card you're not going to be able to have the capture card software up while you also have your OBS up because it's not going to work but that's an option for you right there if your computer can handle all that um, but these are some good things to add if you need to just remember it does require some extra resources and then down here this is just stuff I never even touch this is all generic stuff right here um, but the snap sensitivity is basically for whenever you're moving stuff around on your actual scenes and stuff like that. And then you can snap the source to the edge of the screen, which is gonna be the edge of your canvas here and snap other sources to other sources. So if you have more next to each other, it will snap them and keep them aligned and everything like that. But you can mess with the sensitivity here if you want it to be less or stronger and stuff like that. And that will work with that. So in the stream here, so normally this is going to be under just your streaming services, but they also have the option for custom streaming service. But first for streaming type for your streaming service, this is where you're going to choose what you're streaming, whether it's going to be Facebook or Mixer. Now for Mixer, if you're using Mixer FTL, make sure you select FTL. Otherwise it will go directly to the RTMP, which is going to be the servers that don't have FTL, which means you'll have a little bit of a delay. If you use stuff like Twitch or Facebook or sorry, read Facebook uh, or I said Facebook, um, but if you use like Twitch or YouTube or any of these other options, you're going to want to select these and then whichever one you select, you're going to then want to either choose to select the server that's closest to you or you can leave it on auto for recommended. And then your stream key is where you're going to grab this for wherever you're streaming from. So if you're streaming from Mixer, you're going to grab the Mixer one. If you're streaming from Twitch, you're going to grab it from Twitch. If you're doing restream, you're going to grab the restream one. You're going to paste it here. So just make sure you're selecting the right service and make sure you select the right server or leave it as auto and then just throw in your stream key. Very self-explanatory. For your output, this is where it gets a lot of people. So there's, oh, actually, hold on. I forgot something. So custom server, sorry. For a custom server, um, custom streaming server, this is if the service that you want in here is not listed. So if they give you the option of having a certain URL for it, like an RTMP server, you would put that RTMP link here and then the stream key for that service. Sorry, because one of the things that aren't actually here is DLive. So DLive would be one of those custom ones. So if DLive has a custom link and then you have a custom stream key, that's how you'd be able to use that. I want to make sure I got that in there. So output, back to output. So most of the time you guys are going to be on this simple, simple mode. 
And for the most part, this should be fine. Now, when you have your video bitrate, bitrate is basically going to be the amount of upload speed that you have. Now, you don't want to put the full upload speed that you have. If you have, say, 100 up, you don't need to put like six to 10,000 because no one's going to be able to watch. Most streaming places other than YouTube only let you go to a max of 3,500. Now, 3,500 means that person that wants to watch also needs to have a very good internet to be able to watch it. So if they don't have a five upload to say, be able to watch it in 1080p, 60 FPS, there's no point of doing that. Now, of course, the higher the bit rate, the better it can look, but that also requires you to select the right type of encoder software or hardware. Now, if you do the encoder software, that means you're gonna be using your processor on your computer which means it's going to be putting a lot of pressure on your processor. If you do the invents or however you want to say this, um, invents C or whatever, there's two different options here. Now, the only way to get the, the invents is going to be if you have a GeForce graphics card. And I believe it's only with the, I think it's with the 900 series and the 1000 and 2000 series. I know for sure it's with the 1000 and 2000 series. I'm not 100% sure if it's with the 900 series. But this will allow you to encode everything off of your graphics card. Now, there's always going to be you know pros and cons to each one. So make sure you test out each option and see what works best for you. So we'll say software. Now for audio bit rate, whatever your audio microphone is set to is what you're going to want to set this set this to. Normally 160 is pretty good. 192 is pretty good as well. It's usually the best. Um, but anything over than that, I think might be overkill. So if you're wanting to not stream, but you're wanting to record, then it's going to still be pretty much the same options here. And now you're going to choose the area where you want it to go to. You're going to want to choose the recording quality. Now you can either do you know, the highest quality, which will be a medium file, or you can do a larger file or even a much larger. Now, obviously you're going to have lossless quality or you'll have indistinguishable quality for that, or you can leave it as same as stream. So it really just matters up to you how you want to set it up. And then for the, uh, for the format, usually MP4 is probably going to be your best format that you're going to want to select for that. And that would pretty much be it. Now, if you're wanting to go into things a little bit more advanced, which is usually where I go, is going to be under the advanced tab. Now, this is where you're going to be able to see your audio track for audio track one. You'll be able to still see the encoding software that you're going to want to use. And then you'll have all these extra ones like the CBR means constant bit rate, which means it's going to try to keep it to this bit rate here of 3000 or whatever you have your set to. And then there's some sites that are going to ask you like, hey, you want to set this to a certain keyframe. Usually the keyframe is set for two. That's pretty, pretty standard for a lot of places. And then this is where you're going to want to be able to see your CPU preset. Now, if your computer processor is not very strong, most, most streamers are going to leave it at very fast, which means it's not going to use too much of your processor, so you should still be able to do a lot of different things. However, if you are still having a lot of problems, you're gonna to wanna to go with super fast or ultra fast, but if you go with super fast and ultra fast, you will see pixelation. It will use less of your processor, but it will also have a con of where you're gonna have a hit on your quality and how it's gonna look. It's gonna be a bit grainy, a little bit pixelated. Now, if you do have a good processor, you can probably move it down to faster or fast. And if you have a really killer processor, you could probably go down all the way to slow or slower. But the lower you go down, the better the quality can look, yes. But it also does a lot more work on your actual CPU. So this would probably be better if you have a dual PC setup, if you're gonna go into like slower, slower. Most of the time, I hear people staying around very fast, faster. Very rarely does anyone go, go into fast. 
So it's really up to you, but just be very careful with this because if you're not sure on your CPU and how strong it is, then don't take the chance in actually doing damage to it and just stick with very fast or go to super fast. So we'll keep that one there. Now for your profile, this is basically telling the processor like what order you want it to really focus on. So you can either keep it to being very high, meaning it's going to be like the top thing that needs to have the highest priority, or you can leave it main, which will be kind of like normal. And then baseline just kind of like generic. It's very idled in my opinion. I, I don't really see a difference between any of these. And if I have these all wrong, please, please let me know. i that's my assumption to it. There's really no like thing that tells you like what these are. I just leave it on high so that way I know it's getting the the highest uh, like dedication to it. Tune, you don't do anything. And then this sub me thing, I don't even touch. So recording and everything, this is, you know, if you're wanting to have multiple tracks, maybe you have like an interface with multiple microphones and stuff like that. This would be your setup for something like that. Same thing where, you know, the recording format is going to be and making sure you have it in the right spot and, you know, choosing. Oh, I guess there's only one. I thought there'd be more. Well, let me know. <laughs> uh, choosing the bit rate for everything and, you know, keyframes are still the same. CPU presets still the same. And then here's all your audio tracks and everything like that. So you have multiple audio tracks, too. So that is pretty much the advanced. There's a lot of stuff that goes into the advanced. It's it's a lot of, a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, now the other thing too is if you chose the graphics card, now it kind of changes things up here for your presets. Most of the time, having it set for either max quality or if you go with the like low latency quality and stuff like that. Like it just kind of matters on which one's going to work best for you on what you're trying to achieve. So just kind of mess with each one. And there's just new version here, which kind of gives some other um, options. I think now these all look the same. All I know is they gave an update for it and yeah, I, but I don't, I don't use this. I used to, but they had high quality as one of the options, but they don't seem to have it anymore. They have max quality, quality, performance, max performance. So they've changed these up a little bit, but I usually will just stick with this because I have a 2700X and it works just fine, even when I'm doing PC games. So moving on on, on to audio, you're going to want to make sure you're setting it up to, you know, whatever your microphone is going to be. And you can set up multiple microphones if you have multiple microphones, multiple speakers, however you want to set it up. For video, if you're wanting to have your canvas be in 1080p and then downscale to 720p, what you're doing is you're taking a high resolution image and you're shrinking it down, which means the picture could be a lot sharper. And when you're doing that, you're going to want to make sure that you at least use it to where it's sharpening when scaling, so that's why I have it there. And this is where you're gonna set up your FPS. So if you're wanting to stream in 60 FPS or if you can handle FPS of 60 frames, then go ahead and set it there. Otherwise, 30 is usually gonna be the sweet spot for a lot of viewers because of internet connectivity and stuff like that. A lot of people watch on mobile. So 60 frames per second is really hard for a lot of people. So 30 frames, even at 1080p, is still pretty good. So for hotkeys, these are generic. This is if you're wanting to start and stop a stream, recording, enable studio mode, yada, yada. Everything's very self-explanatory. Basically, all you're doing on here is you're going to click in these boxes, give it a hotkey on your keyboard, and you're all set. That is pretty much how that works. In the advanced tab here, you will have different priorities on how you want the computer to understand how you want OBS or Streamlabs OBS to be recognized in terms of the processing order in a sense. So if you want it to be like top of the line, main priority, you said it's a high. It will use a little bit more resources, but that will at least put it in front of other things that are being processed. Everything else here, don't even touch. I don't even mess with any of these things. If your audio speakers need to be adjusted, you can always fix them here. But anything else on here, I don't even touch. Scene collections. So if you have your own 
scenes from maybe a different type of um, a different oh, like encoder, you might be able to bring them over. So if you have a file like an overlay file that you exported, you can import that over here. Or if you have created a bunch of scenes on Streamlabs OBS, you can export them first, save it to your desktop, and then you can go and create a brand new scene collection and then import the old scenes over. That way you don't have to go and resize a bunch of different stuff and you don't have to really mess with too much. You may have to tweak a few things here and there and maybe some sources, but for the most part, a lot of that stuff will come over with ease. So for notifications, I don't even touch this, but this will allow you to have a notification whenever you drop frames and you can set it to be at a certain slider from whenever frames are being skipped or dropped. So that's good. And then for appearance, you can have it in night mode, which is what I have it in right now, or you can get rid of it out of night mode. And, you know, there's other options here. You can enable now because I'm signed into Twitch. You can enable the Twitch TV or better TTV emotes for Twitch and stuff like that. It might be different or it might always be on here. I'm not entirely sure. I don't log into all the different options that they have here that you can log into. But there's that. And then remote control. I don't even use this, but it says that you can now control Streamlabs OBS from your phone. To begin, you can scan the QR code on your phone. This feature will only work with the most recent version of Streamlabs Mobile. I have no idea how this works, so I'm not going to go and try to give you guys a bunch of BS on how it works because I have no clue. But it's not really that important for me. I don't think it's really going to be that big of a feature for you guys to really worry about when you're getting started. The main thing is you know, making sure that you have... Everything set up for your streaming service, having your streaming key, everything in there, making sure your output is correct. If you're going to be under advanced tab or if you're going to do everything under simple, there's going to be obviously more options for you under advanced. Don't feel intimidated about any of these things. There's plenty of videos online that go over this stuff. If you need any questions answered, you can always ask me inside the comments and I'll try to help you guys out as best as possible. For audio, audio is very important. Make sure you guys have it set up to where it's not it's not stuck on mono. You want it to make sure it is on stereo and everything like that. Even if you have a surround, 7.1 surround, don't even worry about that. We just want to make sure that it's set to stereo. And then make sure you have the correct microphones selected and not using your webcam mic because it's going to sound really bad, so don't use that. And then for your video, this also is important too. If you're going to downscale, make sure you are downscaling properly. So if you are doing 1080p, make sure you downscale to 720p. That's what a lot of people are going to be able to watch. Remember, 30 frames is the sweet spot. 60 frames is only for people that are going to be able to handle it. And a lot of people watch on mobile. So do keep that in mind whenever you are setting this up. And that should really be it. I mean, I know this was pretty long. There's a lot of stuff that I do go over really quickly. And the reason why I do that is because I want you guys to fully understand it. I didn't just want to try to blaze through it because this is also set for beginners and everything like that. So hopefully this was able to give you guys just a little bit of an insight as to what exactly you know, what you can expect in the settings. And if anything did get confusing, let me know in the comment section below. If I miss anything, miss said anything, definitely go ahead and correct me. We're all human. We make mistakes. And, you know, this is all from personal experience of using the program. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the content on the channel. And make sure you hit that bell icon. That way you get notified every time I do upload a video. And I will see you guys in the comments and also in future videos. Thank you so much for watching and take care.